Once they're done, turn apart the pallet, they put it here. They have scrap wood whenever they have a project. Real quick, name some things that you have built with scrap wood. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Justin. I see you got your main helper here. <laughs> That's right, my partner in crime. <laughs> You guys gonna do the chores this morning? Got got the daily morning chores. Okay, let's see it. First thing is work, cleaning off the chicky dish and getting everybody a drink. You holding the hose for him? Yeah. <laughs> you like taking care of the chickens? Yeah. And who's your favorite chicken? I love Pete. Go, go grab Pete. How did Pete get out? These are only three of chickens. <laughs> Peep's gentle enough that she doesn't really mess up any of the anything that we're growing. You want to hold Peep for a second? Remember, hold Peep nice up like that. Peep, your favorite chicken? Yeah. She's soft, huh? Yeah, it's a chicken. Careful, careful! It's so heavy. Try to find a spot where there's some new weeds growing. He's putting his tractor in a new spot where there are some weeds. I guess he wants to get some of these up. The chickens all easily do that. So we figured out the exact right amount of food based on one of your vlogs. Oh good. <laughs> how do you know how much to feed them? I think that, what'd you say, like a half pound per, per chicken? Third or Third pound. Third pound? Yeah, so uh, you actually advise like finding the, the right cup that matches it. So yeah. two, two of these yogurts per girl seems to do the trick. Just one egg this morning. That means they're gonna lay them later in the track there. The leader of the pack. Have you found three chickens to be enough for you? Yeah, the, because I like to do, I, I, I will eat two eggs a day, and that way you got one extra to kind of keep it going. Come on. Uh oh, to go back in. Let's pretend like you're gonna ignore them and they'll come back out eventually. There you go. Good catch. Alright, we're ready to go. Back here you'll, you'll see the, the ultimate of savings that instead of building a custom door or, or even, uh, you know, just having to build this spot out, just measure the exact total size of a pallet, shove a pallet in there, that's the door. <laughs> Mike has figured out what his local resources are which in this case was pallet wood and other wood and he's built his stuff around that of what he has available. That's a pretty good idea. See I got the drip irrigation set up on all the beds and it takes care of probably 85 percent but for the seedlings and the new stuff I actually have a bunch of lettuce seeds in here and then for some of the stuff I just want to make sure actually gets enough water I'll, I'll cheat a little bit in the morning and Hose it, hose it down. You know, you only got so much time in the morning, so I've got this boiled down to most days being able to get everything accomplished in 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes by this point, the, the little one's lost interest. What do you have in these beds, Mike? Uh, right here, this one, they got a little sweet potato that actually starts there and it's kind of made its way all the way over here. Here I'm doing some, uh, it's my late, se late in the season micro green crop. I'm doing some kales and uh, Tow mini tower lettuce and uh, arugula so I'll probably harvest them before you know when they only get about that big um, I got a little cilantro over here some marigolds a papaya that just found its way in there so I'll let it grow uh, and that way it'll shade I can actually grow some things over the summer there underneath the shade of the papaya I'll probably move it to the front after the, the, the end of the summer Cilantro, sage, more marigolds, and oregano, and then a big broccoli right in the middle there. And you can see that we've gotten a lot of heads. There's a couple more heads. With that broccoli, I'm letting the top ones go to seed, and maybe in a couple days I'll cut that top off, put it in a paper bag, and then that way I can collect all the seeds at the, at the bag as the, the flowers pop open. I'll let it get started a little bit. And then this last bit over here is my mega make a cabbage bed. This year I found out a, a great secret down here. Normally when I grow cabbage, by the time they get this big, they're just full of pests and insects. But I put in dills first. Um, so the dills there, you can see they're kind of dying off now, starting to, to go to seed. But the, the heavy scent of the dill actually kept all the, the bugs away. So uh, all of these cabbages have, have been able to develop. This is the, the best year I've had so far with cabbages. This is our uh, butterfly or pollinator garden. 
it's basically all ornamentals. You can see a little tomato has snuck up there from our compost, but we we try to keep this area with lots of flowering plants. It's a mix of some stuff we put in and the rest is all just local wildflower and weeds. Essentially, there's some mums out there that I got for Susie for uh, her birthday. Uh, so we're planting them in the ground and then we got a couple of fruit trees. Uh, lemon tree, that one's not doing great. Orange tree, another lemon tree and uh, mango. We keep them all dwarfed, that way they're manageable. But uh, with all these, all these wildflowers, it keeps our, we have a large population of Miller bees in the yard that uh, keep us nicely, nicely uh, pollinated. On this guy right here, this is just a local weed, but it looks awesome. It's got these berries on it. The birds love it, so it actually helps bring in some birds later. You just water the weed, y'all. <laughs> He's a good example to all of us. Finding a use of everything, turning that problem into a solution, saying, hey, there's a weed. I'll water it and see what happens. Oh, the birds like this. The birds come in and eat the harmful insects and all that kind of stuff. This place really is like an oasis. We had a little uh, dinner there last night and a lunch here and it's nice in the shade. It's supposed to be hot in Florida, but it's nice and cool under here. <laughs> I commend Mike for creating a little heaven in your backyard. You've got a rainbow hub, huh? but how's the rain getting in it? Yeah, we actually uh, have figured out the angle that you can see right there on the uh. house when uh, it's like the concentration of water falls right there right into the barrel <laughs> we thought about adding gutters but we just haven't got around to it yet it's on the list cool. you get a lot of the strawberries yeah. you're a good helper you giving a little dance you want to show some dance moves oh yeah oh yeah He's got Claudia. It's right in the bag, in the bag. A special job for her. Okay, now I'll go do the other one. And we all know he would probably be able, well, he would be able to do this faster by himself. But he's doing a good thing by involving the Chiddler because they're spending precious time together. That's right. And, and she's learning how to work. And learning what's important. And she's learning where it comes from, food comes from. What's important for her to learn? Uh, well, I feel like um, just the, the re daily responsibility of chores and taking care of stuff. And of course, once she gets old enough to do it on her own, then I don't have to do it myself. <laughs> that, we know what you're up to. There it is. That's training, where it comes out. Training for the you future. You got all philosophical, and then <laughs> the truth came out. <laughs> you you want to go water up front with Papa? Oh, oh, camera. You're gonna be in there. You're gonna be in there sipping tea. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> She's saying, yeah. "Yeah." What are you gonna water now? We're gonna go up front and water our ornamentals. So I do notice a difference between your front yard and your backyard. Yeah, we try What's to. What's the idea? The, the front yard is the stuff that uh, that neighbors I think will think is pretty. <laughs> don't don't want to don't want to make anybody mad by farming up front. I know some this people is, do. <laughs> this is the normal yard, huh? Right. Right. This is the normal side, and then the back side. <laughs> that's right. This is where we, where we keep all our want. veggies. Okay. You're keeping peace out here. That's smart. That's right. Yeah, we got. I uh, do see you're sneaking in some food growing. Yeah, that's plants. right. A couple, couple. That's actually a, a lychee tree. Uh, so one day it'll, it'll be years up before that guy's giving fruit, and we do papayas too because they're yeah, they're saw pretty. That. Sometimes the nobody minds the themselves. papayas. Nice oak tree you planted there, buddy. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, we we actually inherited that one, right? Would be nice. I'd love to take credit for it. Now we actually are just the stewards of this oak tree. They estimate that tree to be 200 years 200 old. 200 years old, yeah. So what was happening in 1817? Yeah, you gotta, gotta imagine probably not too much. I bet that there's nothing around here. Did you see this man? Yeah. This is old barb, barbed wire. <laughs> yeah, that was, it's been here the right? whole time. <laughs> it's, gone, it's been here a long, long time because it's in the middle of that tree. Man, I'd love to know the story on that. Right. 
I heard that Susie is the palate destruction yeah. expert. I would definitely say so, yes. Yeah, I'm interested to see that because I have a hard time breaking them apart without breaking the palate. Right, right. I, I myself also cannot get them apart without breaking them. Okay, Susie. All right. He's been bragging about you. This is a regular palette. You find these, you can just go through Craigslist or if you live in South Florida, find out where your, when your bulk pickup is and just go through your neighborhood and you'll see them anywhere. The nails, the rustier the nails, the harder they're gonna be. They're gonna be stuck in there. So um, it's not really about force, it's about pressure, applying the right pressure. And my husband got me this little handy tool. It's called a deck wrecker. This particular one is called the Deck Demon. The actual intent is to literally wreck decks. So it's very heavy and it's very strong. It's like the, it's about applying the right pressure. You wanna start from the center out and you start here in the wood crack. Gently. Nice. Coming up. You're gonna crack wood. It's bound to happen. Save your little pieces. And, and like I said, see that nail's very rusted, so it just went through the wood. Oh, and make sure you have steel toe boots, because you'll have to do that right there. You don't want to do that with regular shoes. Wow, you're really working that and able to save that. A little bit. I think. Yeah. There's no way you're going to save that one with the crack already in it. Yeah, you but can. you're doing a good job. It takes a little while, but... And save the little nails. There are places that'll melt them down for you and you can make your own nails if you want to. Hmm. We have one down here in Fort Lauderdale. It's called Maker Square. And then don't take it out. Don't take all the boards out. Loosen them up because you're gonna need that board for the other side. Ah, so you leave, you leave a right. couple of Just nails. Leave, yeah, leave, yes, exactly. Leave them in until you're ready to start pulling them out. Also, if you remove all of them, when you're gonna flip them for the other side, then you don't have a sound structure. So remember that. Good tip. And if you're 5'2", not really very strong, you can still do this, but the pallet moves. So that's when you have to call your husband to come and stand on the other side of the pallet. Counterweight. She found a job for you. <laughs> that's right. This is, this is what I do best, standing here. Stand, you like to stand there, drink your coffee, and point. That's right. <laughs> exactly. He supervises. <laughs> so look at that gentle touch. It's like pressure, but gentleness. Yes, you don't want it. Yeah, you don't want to put any force. You'll crack every single board. Real quick, name some things that you have built with scrap wood. This is the case that holds the pallet, which is made out of pallets, or even with the handle right here. This was originally an herb drying table. We even have it here. We're not using it as a drying as much as just storage basically. Some of the rails is pallet. Gardening table is pallet. The shelf right here is pallet. This table is pallet. This bridge is all pallet. That's why it's different sizes. This vertical garden is pallet. This chicken door right here is just a pallet. We just took out one side and just placed it here and it fits perfect. And the doors is they're basically being held together with plywood. Yeah. And it's just pallet wood. The side is pallet wood. All of the shelves inside are pallet wood. Even the tray is pallet yeah, wood. The tray is pallet wood. That was one of the first projects. That's, and that's how, we, that's how I learned. I didn't come knowing all this stuff. It was making small items like this. A little shelf under their office desk is also pallet wood. And this was built three years ago. This is your original pallet wood. This you is gotta the original. start somewhere. You do have to start somewhere and that's where I learned. And it's just the little pieces because you Crack cracked all the every single piece. <laughs> Good for you. And this was a little tray, and I guess you still use it. We as a do tray. use it. Yep. We put the computer on it so it doesn't heat up. Yeah. How nice. Thanks, guys, for taking me along the chores. Yeah, thanks. That's inspiring what you're doing with the pallets. I know you're going to save some pallets. <laughs> People um, see this, they're going to do something, even if it's a little tray. That's right. Get started any way you can. It's a lot of fun. It really is. <laughs> Done with the chores. Let's see what the kids are doing. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How long y'all been awake? A long time. You're welcome yeah. to come help me if y'all wake up. Okay. Hey, so, you still waking up, rubbing your eyes? Uh, yeah. Good morning, buddy. Thanks for the hug. We wanted to go outside, but Mama wouldn't let us. No, you can't. You gotta. You gotta be with one of us. We're on a street right here, guys. I know. You gotta get in the, their backyard where it's fenced in. Lily, how you doing this morning? Dead. Okay, you guys ready for the special breakfast? Yeah. 
This may not sound exciting to most of you, but it's very exciting yeah. for us. We found this special yeah. gluten-free organic bakery. <laughs> we drove over there. We stocked up. We haven't had bagels in years. Is that right, Beck? We're going to have bagels this morning for breakfast. What, you guys excited what about that? Like? What, what are they? <laughs> He's asking me what bagels taste like. Oh, you guys okay. eating those bagels? Mm -hmm. You enjoying that? Uh-huh. That's a special treat, isn't it? No words. That must be a good thing, Mom. I know. Adia's no, gonna she'll... eat with y'all? Yes. Uh, she's just a second breakfast. <laughs> you a hobbit? She's a hobbit. You eating second breakfast? <laughs> 